Checking. Welcome. Okay. We might just work out who we've got in the room to start with. Uh, any early childhood? No. Um, special education, um, not special education, uh, secondary education? Mostly. Primary? Okay, and anyone else I missed doing something different? So some special education and primary. Okay, welcome. Um, and we might introduce ourselves and then we'll get started. So my name's Rachel Hedger and I'm the course coordinator for early childhood education. And I do most other things, professional experience, tutoring, anything. <laughs> I'm uh, Troy, I'm the secondary coordinator, uh, so I'm a teaching specialist here at Flinders University, so the majority of the time I'm either teaching or uh, taking the responsibilities obviously for secondary and uh, uh, it's quite a good job, I enjoy it and I really am looking forward to working with most of you going forward. Hello, I'm Dr Anne Spencer and I'm a senior lecturer in education curriculum here. Um, I work mostly in languages, but my responsibility also includes uh, land type coordination. So I'll be talking with you specifically today about land type. And we've also got um, one of our wonderful course advisors, Caroline, here. So if you've got study plan questions or topic questions, then someone in the room should be able to answer them. <laughs> Probably Caroline. <laughs> Let's just be honest. So welcome and it's not a very hospitable day but welcome and thank you for coming here um, and hopefully we can give you some more information about your courses so that you feel really well prepared for starting next week. Um, so we'll start by uh, acknowledging that this land we meet on today is the traditional lands of the Ghana people and that we respect their spiritual relationship with their country we also acknowledge their continued responsibility to care for country as we work on Ghana land. So some more of uh, who we all are. So you can see um, some of our faces on this slide as well. Um, Carol Lalant is our course coordinator for special education. Trudy Sweeney is our course coordinator for primary. And uh, Jackie Thompson, you'll get to know she's our Director of Professional Experience. So while she'll have topic coordinators for professional experience, there's also an overall coordinator um, for any professional experience placement, and that's Jackie. And then our Dean of Education, Professor Deb Bateman, you may see around as well. And if you have a health and physical education focus, then you may also um, come across Shane Pill, Associate Professor Shane Pill. I think you were meant to do that slide, Troy. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right, I'll let you do this one. <laughs> so, um, just building on, I guess, from the professional experience team. So, um, as Rachel mentioned, you'll get to know these people fairly well because they're sort of responsible for your upcoming placements. So, it's not really until second year when you start to experience that. So, um, that'll be working with Jackie. You will have the um, lectures. Um, some of you hopefully have enrolled in the professional experience lectures um, so it starts to give you a taste I guess of what the expectations will be when you're teaching and those sorts of things so uh, you get to know Jackie really well you'll also get to know uh, Anna Noble as well she looks after the secondary specifically when you're out on your third year placement and then for your um, fourth year it's Jackie as well at the moment, isn't it, Rachel, mm. I think? Yeah, so Jackie takes on the responsibility for the fourth years as well. 
Um, Rachel obviously looks after the early childhood professional experience and then Jennifer Francis looks after the third year and first year masters and final year primary students. So um, you'll get to know those people fairly well. In addition to those people, you will also get a university liaison as well for your specific placement. So um, in most cases, generally it's a uh, academic member of staff year who has teaching experience, but it can also be, um, I guess, other professionals as well that are recently retired in the field and they will work with you and support you on your placement. So you'll have your obviously mentor teachers, but you'll also have as well a university support with you along that journey. Um, our student admin services team, I know Ali spoke about this in the uh, session this morning, so um, you probably won't see these people face to face necessarily, but it's when you put through your service one request is when you'll get in touch with them essentially. So anything to do with you know study plans, um, enrolment, timetabling, those sorts of things. Um, Caroline as well with her other support network um, will get in touch with you if you put in a service one request, which is through that Okta dashboard. Um, so I suppose one of the things you'll get, need to get familiar with is all these different acronyms that Flinders <laughs> use and there's a whole heap of them and I don't expect you to know them uh, by the end of today but you'll become accustomed to them essentially as you progress along here at Flinders. So um, when we're talking about a SAM, we're basically talking about the statement of assessment method. So you'll see that published on your flow topic guide. Um, and on the flow site, I should say. It basically, it's a contract between us and you of what the expectations are for the course in terms of when the assessments are, what the assessments are, when they're due, and there might be some other expectations around attendance and those sorts of things as well. Um, flow is obviously Flinders Learning Online, so that's the online platform we use here. Um, some of you might have used Moodle and those types of things before, very similar. Fan is your Flinders authentication name, so that's your username, which is generally the first four letters of your last name, followed by a four-digit number, and then you obviously have a password. So you'll need that Flinders authentication generally to access computers and that here at Flinders. CEPSW basically is our college, College of Education, Psychology and Social Work. In your study plan, you'll have core topics. So core topics are the ones that you can't negotiate. You have to do them, they're essential. And as well, some of you might have in your study plan the ability to select some electives and you can generally do them basically across the university. Um, Topics obviously is the subject essentially that you're studying. The course is obviously Bachelor of Education, Bachelor of Arts, whatever it might be, so there's a difference there. Um, the first point of call really for any issues, problems, concerns in a topic is the topic coordinator or your tutor. If you're not happy with that sort of outcome and response, obviously you can come and see myself as a secondary coordinator or Rachel, whoever the coordinator is if you're not happy with uh, I guess what's going on and what's eventuated, but we ask you to you know, talk with your topic coordinator first and generally that resolves 85% of the issues anyway. Okta dashboard, it's obviously what Ali was speaking about this morning about all those different apps um, which you log into and find, so Studiosity, Flow, all those types of things. Ask Flinders, as I said before, is where you put through all your requests if you've got an issue with you know, workshop times or whatever it might be. Our college office is um, in the education building. It's located on the fourth floor. Um, so you'll see it as you walk up the steps, essentially. Um, it's on the fourth level. So if there's any sort of pressing issues or concerns, you can drop in there, but they will probably direct you to put through a service one request anyway. And then the professional experience office is all over the place, really. But where is it now, Level Rachel? Level four, um, <coughs> at the car park end of the building on the left-hand side. Yeah. So, if so you handbooks, professional experience-related questions, you go there. Absolutely. Cool. 
next one, Rachel. That's me. So, um, to help you settle into your university life, this week is a good opportunity for you to log on to the Finding, at Flinders, Finding Your Way at Flinders Flow page. You should all have access to that via Flow. So, if you go to your Okta dashboard, click on the Flow um, kind of symbol, the app there, it will give you access to this Flow page where you can search for information, go through modules and make sure that you're really well prepared for your studies starting uh, next week. There's links to um, courses and online um, tutorials as well as face-to-face -face sessions all this week that you can log into such as referencing support, assignment writing support, study plans and um, making sure you're all organised and ready for for uh, teaching next week. So uh, in addition to that, if you need um, any further support through your journey, you can also follow the link at the bottom there uh, to make sure that you uh, have all the information that you need. So there's lots of opportunities to make sure that uh, you're prepared for your first semester of um, learning, uh, either via the Flow page or via the link at the bottom there as well. Just a reminder that we um, need to be conscious of how we are behaving online. Um, re respectful and appropriate behaviour is expected at all times at Flinders. This includes our online environments and you will be spending a lot of time um, online for your studies. Flinders University is committed to providing a safe and respectful learning environment and has a zero tolerance for sexual assault and harassment. If you have any concerns, you can send uh, an email to the um, student EO at flinders.edu.au. You can speak to your topic coordinators or your course coordinators, um, and they were detailed on those beginning slides. Um, you can also uh, call the number there for um, support with a equal opportunities advisor. Um, and so our message is that you're not alone in any of these experiences and to please let us know if you've got any concerns. Uh, it is our job to help you and support you through your course. Um, so please uh, be, keep in touch. Um, and you know, if anything happens at any time, if you find you know, everything's getting a bit too much and you don't feel like you can uh, submit your assignment on time, if you just communicate what it is that um, you're experiencing um, or just give us a general idea, then we can help you with um, continuing to be successful through um, extensions and meetings and, and support that way um, and also with our health and counselling support. So kind of don't suffer in silence if you've got um, something that's concerning you, just let us know um, and then we can make sure that you feel really supported and that you can still be successful with us in your studies. There are three mentoring programs available for new students. There's the O-Guide program that you'll find on, your, on the flow page. Again, you're finding your way at Flinders. Um, anyone wearing a blue t-shirt this week will show you um, where to go if you're lost. Um, and they're also giving campus tours uh, and making sure that you can uh, find your way across the campus. You found this building, so that's... Um, always helpful. I had someone walk into my lecture earlier who had got to the wrong room, so well done for finding this space. There's also the e-mentoring program for anyone who's offshore and studying online. And then we have the uni access mentoring program for anyone with um, health or disability conditions as well. So um, if you'd like more information about those support services, then the link at the bottom of the page will help you with that also. Something to get onto this week is to set up your email signature. When you're contacting people across the university for professional experience or your topics, we need to know who you are. Um, so it's helpful if you can set up your email signature in your Outlook um, with the following information. So your full name, your student ID, the course you're doing and your year of study. Um, and that's very easy to do in the settings in the top right hand corner um, of the Outlook page. And that means that if you email someone from professional experience and you say, hi, I'm just inquiring about my placement, then we know what year of placement you're doing and we know whether um, you're primary, early childhood, secondary, and we can make sure we direct your inquiry to the right place. So it's important that we know who you are. 
Um, so set up your email signature at some point this week. When you complete your professional experience placement at Flinders, and this will be discussed more in your lecture series, but something just to know um, for the meantime, you will need uh, a couple of documents, and you may already have them if you're working with young children already. Um, so you might like to consider preparing those uh, in the next few weeks. So the requirements for your first professional experience out to a site, uh, to a school setting would be the RAN um, or the RAN EC is its new title and that's the mandatory notification, the reporting um, risk of harm, abuse and neglect training. We offer that here at Flinders and you will get a notification um, via the professional experience flow page for training that we do that we offer here on campus so you will need to sign up for that at some point um, if you already have completed this training then you don't need to do it um, but you will need to do that before your first professional experience placement you'll also need a working with children check um, that will either be completed this semester or when you start your first placement topic and we can also support you through that placement and get that process if you already have one then you don't need to do another one but the old kind of dh uh, dsci doesn't um, count once that's expired so we need to make sure that you have um, a new working with children check uh, before you'll be able to complete your placement. Any questions about that process before we carry on? Okay, over to you, Anne. You're okay. You might be able to hear me without a microphone. I'm not on you? the recording. Oh, okay. I won't be able to hear you. But the recording can't. Okay, no. so some of this is just revising what we've already spoken about. So in terms of the SAM, Statement of Assessment Methods, as Troy has already mentioned, you will find this on the flow page, the Flinders Learning Online page. And that's where all the assessment information is there in a nutshell. The topics each have a topic information book as well, and that will have more detail about, for example, the kinds of assessments that are required, the sorts of work you will be covering in each week of the topic, uh, and that is also on the flow site for your topic. It's recommended and suggested that you might like to print a copy of that so that you've got that to refer to throughout the semester because that will be followed closely and that gives you a forward running then on what the next uh, content will be coming up, also the readings that will be required. So it's really useful to check in detail the topic information booklet. As Rachel said, if you have um, any difficulty with assignments and you're feeling anxious about them, you must submit an extension request via Flow. So they'll be considered before the uh, due date of the assignment. Uh, so if you submit that extension request, again, you'll find, a, find it on Flow. It will say exactly that, request for an extension. And that's where you would uh, click on it and provide perhaps evidence of why you would need that extension. Um, if you have an access plan, meaning, for example, you may have um, possibly say dyslexia, then you would have an access plan and that would be provided to the topic coordinator confidentially so that the topic coordinator can best um, provide for your needs throughout the topic. So an access plan is important if you have any particular uh, special needs that we need to know about and to make sure that the topics are best suited to you. Just a, a brief mention of referencing. Please refer to the APA uh, 7 um, for 2021, and you'll be able to find that, even if you want to take a photo of this slide, for example, and then you'll be able to see that link there um, so that you can go to it for further referencing. The library, of course, is really helpful if you get stuck at all, but you can see a page up there, Flinders University, under the Student Learning Support Service, have APA referencing the seventh edition and you can speak with them as you become more familiar with it and work with that. So different disciplines within um, the university use different referencing. Um, in education we use APA and you can get training for this uh, this semester that can help you with for example um, end or end note training so that can help you to get set up 
to so you can reference more easily your assignments. Okay. Uh, this slide I would really recommend you take a photo of because this is about Lantite. And the Lantite, has anyone heard of Lantite already? It stands for the Literacy and Numeracy Test for Initial Teacher Education. And this is an Australian government requirement. So many of you may have sat in that plan at school if you've been through education in Australia. And that is another Australian government requirement. It's not something the university has any control over at all. Every student studying education in every university in Australia has to sit land tight. Whether you're in Darwin, whether you're here or in Hobart, you'll be sitting land tight because the Australian government says you must sit it and pass it in order to graduate, register and work in the teaching profession. For this reason, it's really essential that you don't leave it until the last year of your education program. You do not want to do four years and then find I can't graduate because I haven't passed land tight. So I really strongly recommend that if you have one message about land tight that you take away for today, it is that you start to look at sitting it this year, in your first year. You will be under less pressure than later and you must um, have sat it in order to do your placement. That's not an Australian government requirement. We just recommend that here at Flinders because we don't want you to get through four years and then have land tight still to do when you've finished your study program already. So the land tight, the literacy and numeracy test for initial teacher education is exactly what its name says. It has two components, literacy and numeracy. I strongly suggest that you just sit either literacy or numeracy, one at a time, um, not both at once, and sit to the one you are most confident in first. The university does not run this. A group called ACER, Australian Council for Educational Research, will manage this on behalf of the Australian Government and have for many years. But our role here at the university is to prepare you for the land tight so that you pass it and you're successful. The reason being that Australian Government will give you three opportunities to sit each component and then the university has to write on your behalf if you may, um, an ACR for Australian Government may give you a fourth or in rare circumstances a fifth attempt but you must pass it in those three goes. And so you don't want to leave it. Given the ACR they're doing with every student doing education in every uni, there are limited places to sit it. And that's another reason to start early. Because there are only four test windows per year that are offered. And you absolutely don't want to be sitting land tight when you're trying to do your best on placement, for example. So there's an opportunity to sit it in about February, March. It means preparing for it in January when you might rather be at the beach or somewhere else, but it's a good time to have a go. The next one is in about May. Then there is one in August, which is coming up now, and then one in November. So the November one is, is quite popular as well because you've finished uni by then. And that might be a good one for you to do. You will have got yourself settled in at uni. But in order to prepare, you must practice for this test. It's not something you can just go in, a bit like your driver's licence, for example. It's a test you have to pass to get on the road, and you might be quite good at driving, but you have to pass the test even so. So the same with this. You might be good at reading or maths, but you still have to pass this test. So what I'm saying is prepare, as you did for your driving licence. Um, and then if you uh, pass it first up, excellent. That's great. But if you're like me, with my driving licence, it took a couple of goes. So with this, you may have a couple of goes, and that's a game while we say start early, but prepare because you want to pass it in one go because you also have to pay for it to the Australian government. So that's another reason you want to prepare, practice your skills and be ready. To practice, there are two online workshops, and this works best because we have a lot of students studying from different locations, um, it's good to do it in short, targeted bursts, so it's online. So whether there's COVID or there isn't, whether you live at Gawler or you're in... Um, we also have international students who are waiting to come to Australia to start 
studying their education degree, that you can all be preparing. So the workshops that are offered for this are online on Tuesdays and Thursdays at the times you can see there. Tuesdays 1 to 1.50, Thursdays 11 to 11.50, and you log in through Collaborate, as was mentioned by Ali earlier, and that way you can ask all the questions you want anonymously, um, you can come through the chat, no one knows whether um, you asked a question that you think, oh, I'm not sure everybody else might know this. You can bet they don't. But because it's online, you can feel comfortable about asking whatever you want about literacy and numeracy. Flinders Uni has also invested in software for each of you. So we've put money into a subscription for each of you to iXL software, I for Igloo, X for X-ray, L. Some people think I'm saying XL, the spreadsheet. Um, and that um, is so you can practice, because this is an online test and you need to be ready online. So this is online support software and you can do it to time and you practice the skills specific to land type. So you're not practicing things that are algebra that's not in the numeracy test, for example. It's matched to what you need to do. I'll be sure to enable a password and an ID for each of you to that. Um, what I need is that you email me with all the details in the email address that Rachel mentioned before, because we have a certain number of licenses and we roll them over as new students come on board. And as we're seeing that you're making use of it, we keep you on there um, until you pass land type. Um, if you want any more information, please contact me, or there are a lot of resources on the land type flow site, and you will be automatically put on that as you would be with the topic. There's a lot of information there at the bottom link there, which is ACER, the Australian Council for Educational Research. They have resources there as well, and they importantly have information about where you sit the test, what's in the test, how is the test scored, um, a lot of information, you need to read all that really carefully. So while that probably sounds like a bit of a heavy note to end on, it's really important that you take notice of land type early because in no time at all, your three or four years are finished and um, you're up to placement and you will have needed to have sat land type um, and you just want to get it out of the way. There's a question about it there. Great question, excellent question. You're right on the ball with that. It's graded against the top 30% of people in the country in about 2016 against the Australian Core Skills Framework. So whether you're doing whatever teaching degree you're doing, or you're sitting at, and studying here at Flinders, or you're at Charles Darwin University, or Monash in Melbourne, wherever you are, you'll be sitting a test. The tests are all different, some of them have more hard questions, some have more easy questions. So that's why, say for example, this test goes for two hours and there are 65 questions. I know I'm getting into the nuts and bolts here, but why it's not like you've got to get 65 out of 65 or 60 out of 65. There's no exact pass rate because some of the tests have more difficult or easier questions. But you do have to get in the top 30% of the population against what they've measured that to be about five years ago. So that's a great question. Um, it is the, it's the same level of difficulty, but of course each test is different with different questions, um, which is why a national organisation like Australian Council for Educational Research manage it on behalf of Australian Government. So just like NAPLAN, you've probably, all of you would have sat NAPLAN that was marked interstate and run centrally. Um, so it's that kind of concept. Any other questions about land type? Has, this, has anyone heard of it before, or is this the first time? Can I just see if you've heard of it before? You have? Okay. Any other questions? Is any question you ask, like that one, benefits everybody? I was just wondering about the emails. Is there anywhere, you see your email there, I think, is it? Yes. I would say you would find those in the topic information booklets would be my best guess. So you will see then exactly who is specific to that 
um, topic that you're doing, and you would have met also Rachel and Troy, who are across. Um, who you are can the do always do a quick Google. Just yeah. type Flinders, and then what you want to find, yeah. and it will come up with the page. <laughs> great question. Any other great questions <laughs> for anybody? All good. All good. Please contact me about Nantuck anytime, and I look forward to meeting you at those sessions. Any other questions before we finish? Have you had? Have you been? On, hands up if you've been on Flow. Had a bit of a look around. Okay, and you're okay with like the filtering of finding your flow pages and things like that because you can star them, some are in progress, some are past. Have you come across that kind of concept yet? I wonder if I might just show um, everybody what to do. Um, I'll probably have to log in, so just give me a moment. Seeing as we've got a bit of time. Need, and then you need to do your. I'm hoping you've all got this set up on your phone. Do your um, notifications. Or you can get it to go to your watch if you've got a um, smartwatch. <coughs> okay, so um, on your main page across the top here, it will show you, show you the pages that you've recently accessed. Um, and then it's got. Um, kind of key or upcoming announcements down the right hand side and then when you have your topics to start with it they'll all be shown like this and as you can see I have a lot of flow pages and some I don't look at very often so what I do is I um, star the ones that I use every day so we click on the three dots and then you can star or unstar from there so I don't go to this one very much. So um, it's not starred, but I could star that topic. And obviously this one I use, uh, and these other ones are already starred. And then if you then filter by your starred topics, then you can get to the ones that you see all the time, okay? So it's not to say that you might not go to those other ones sometimes, but rather than having to filter through them all, all the time, uh, you might like to kind of bookmark your favourites and also if you want to go back to a previous flow page um, say next year you want to go back to a topic that you studied this semester you can do that by going into your past topics as well so they'll all sit there also um, so that's just kind of a, a handy um, hint if you're going oh, I can't I can't find my flow page like it seems to have completely disappeared it might be that you need to filter it either by one that's in the future or in progress or in the past okay um, so that's just useful in that respect and then um, maybe I'll just kind of show you roughly where a few things might be in a flow page so they always start with a welcome. There's announcements here and you'll get those via email as well. So important, important announcements about the topic. If you've got any online sessions, then you'll find those in Collaborate. So you'll need to click into the Collaborate tool and join the session. Then we've got uh, modules. And these are pretty much the same in most flow pages. So there's topic information and resources to start. Then there's a communication hub and then there's an assessment hub. So you'll find your topic information book here. That gives you all the information about your topics, such as your assessments, um, due dates and all of those things. Then there's your readings and then there might be other helpful things to find um, further down the page. Studiosity is um, a online um, study support module that you can use for additional help. And then these are all resources that I've put in for my students. The communication hub will have a general discussion forum. This is where you can ask questions about the topic. So if there's anything that you're not sure about or things you need further information on, you can ask them in the general discussions forum. Most topics should also have a feedback point, so you can offer anonymous feedback to show whether you're loving the topic, whether there's something that's um, unclear, you can give your feedback there. In the assessment hub, you'll find the SAM, the Statement of Assessment Methods, and that gives you all of the information about um, the assignments that are due for the topic. So 
it will tell you each what each assessment is the proportion of marks that go towards your final grade, the due date, what happens if you don't submit by the deadline and when you can expect your work to come back by. It also has information about extensions, so how you can successfully complete the topic, where it meets the um, learning outcomes for your um, degree, um, academic integrity, uh, and then what happens if you need to resubmit an assessment, if you need a supplementary at the end of the semester because you didn't quite get to um, a pass mark, and any deferred assessments also. So if you're confused about any type of assessment, go to the SAM. The SAMs can't be changed when, once they're written, um, so it's kind of gospel in there. If you need an extension request, you would use the portal here. Um, generally, you need to upload some supporting evidence to say why you feel you need the extension. Um, and those are granted for um, students who cannot complete the assignment on time. Then a tutor or an, a topic coordinator will go into that tool. They'll be able to approve your extension and then that will be reflected in the submission point for your assessment. So you'll get a new due date for your assessment piece. If you have a question about the assessments, there may be a separate discussion forum for that. Um, there's always a turn it in submission point, so you can practice, you can submit your assignment there to see how much comes up back as um, matching other texts, either other people's assignments or other literature. So you can make sure that your score is quite low there, so there's no kind of plagiarism concerns. And then wherever you see this symbol, that's where an assessment um, submission point is um, set up for you. So this is where you would submit your assignments um, in those submission points. Any questions about flow or anything you're not sure about? All good. So one, your topics should all be, if they start next week, your topics should be open today. So it would be a good opportunity this week to go through the flow pages, make sure you're clear with perhaps um, what's expected in week one. You might like to look at week one, what the readings are, any other resources that are available to you to make sure that you're ready and prepared for your first week of teaching. And this week might be a good opportunity to find classrooms and things as well. And we can show you where those are if you're going, I have no idea where Social Sciences South is or something like that. Okay. Any other questions before we finish today? All good. All right, we'll leave you to explore the campus a little bit more. There'll be lots of events happening down at the hub, so feel free to head down there and see. There might even be some free food if you're really lucky. <laughs> Worth the trek. <laughs> yeah, we might go too. <laughs> Thank you for your time this morning, and just let us know if you have any questions at any time.